Yesterday we were talking about how we all got started, right, Lawrence? Mm. Everybody got a story. What was the introduction into music? I think my, my introduction, um, I was playing locally um, with a choir, Dan Willis, Dan Willis in the Pentecost of Chicago. So, man, I used to take the bus to rehearsal, man. I, used, I was still in high school. So me and my homeboy, we didn't roll on bus with amps and everything, going to Oakline, um, and just rehearsing with this new choir that had just came out. It was a local um, interracial choir. So they were preparing for a recording session and they brought in the great Sanchez Harley, super producer, and Darius Brooks. So I remember after rehearsing it with this choir all this time, you know, I got ready to do the rehearsals for the session and they just pulled us in and was like, you're not ready, you're not ready. And I was devastated. I went home and I cried and I, and I knew honestly I wasn't ready. Um, and my mom basically was like, baby, God is going to bless you. Just hang in there. He's going to do it. I'm going to pray over you. You'll, you'll get it one day. Mm -hmm. She said, I want you to go to every rehearsal, regardless if you're playing on the record or not. So every day they rehearsed during the day, I went to every last rehearsal and watched mm -hmm. Richard Gibbs, Al Willis, Steve Brewster on drums, uh, Lamar Jones, who was a young bass player at the time, but he was, he, he had playing? been, yeah, Lamar was playing. And I knew right then I wasn't ready. I said, these guys got something special, guy. Make sure I want that. Mm -hmm. So they gave me two two songs to play on the session. Two, I think two or three songs. Then they went to two. And two days before the session, Sanchez was like, you know what? I'm going to take those two songs from you, too. You're just not ready, man. Wow. I cried right on the spot. Dan Willis spoke up and said, look, we can't do this to him. He's going to play those two songs. So those two songs, I played, waited and played my two songs. And God was with me, and I nailed those two songs. Next year came around. We did the session and allowed me to do the entire session. Um, and they invited John P. Key as a special guest to sing a duet with Pastor Willis. And at the time, John was the biggest thing ever. The, the, uh, what's the name? Walk by Faith had just came out. Jesus is real. Mm -hmm. So they came and John sat in the audience and he listened to me play the entire time, not knowing, I not I didn't think they were paying attention, but he listened to me the whole time. So when he came up to the pool pit to sing his song, he said, young man, you sounded great. He shook my hand and that was it. I get home the next week, a week later, come to find out John had been looking for me, wanted me to come play for his choir. So they called my house and was like, I got from school, my mom wrote it on the wall, on the little pad, you know, by the phone. <laughs> John P. Key called, you called him back. 704 number, I called, Jeanette was on the phone. She was like, Pastor Key, really enjoyed you at that session. So I said all that to say, back then I hung in there and with my mom's prayer and with just belief in God that I could do it, the next year round, John's ears tuned in to me mm. and the rest is history right. I went with John P. Key mm. through that relationship with Nessa Bell Fred, everybody that's in gospel music was affected, I was able to be in those play with those people from that one experience, right. being set down and now uh, you and I ready and it wasn't YouTube, I couldn't go to YouTube and get musical help, I had to go around to all the Tommy's rehearsal, mm -hmm. sit under Steve Huff, mm -hmm. sit under Richard Gibbs and just watch the greats be great and just pray to God that I get a little bit of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's how it came about. Let's get it. Yes, Reverend Bishop Calvin Rogers. Everybody know who you are, but nobody, or most people or some people don't know how'd you start? They don't man. know my story. They don't know your story. They, they don't know glory. my story. They see my glory, but don't, they ain't shining out of my seed. So give, us some, give us some insight on, on how you started and some of the struggles you may have had. I, um, I really... I started just being my dad's like personal drummer. He was a songwriter and producer in Chicago, and um, um, he worked with a lot of groups. And so I would just I would just be with him all the time. And I remember uh, being in the rehearsals when they first started bringing Steve Huff around the Tommies, um, and watching them. And I was sitting under, you know, cats like Ray Beatty, Felix Poehler, Oscar Seaton, um, Kevin Brunson, guys Clyde Davis. Um, I was sitting under all those guys. I was just watching them play and just, you know, and I played at my local church. And uh, I remember like one particular session, um, my church had recorded a very big album at one point with Albertina Walker that was really, really big. And so then after some years, um, after some years, they, uh, they did another album with her and I was in rehearsals of thinking I'm gonna play. And, didn't get a chance to play. It wasn't a big deal. I mean, it was a big deal. My feelings were hurt, but it just, you know, kind of like what Maurice said earlier, it's just the, the stuff that came along with it, and we just got used to, you know what I'm saying, that kind of thing happening, so it wasn't no going and packing up and not going back to church, you know what I'm saying? It's right. like, you know, 
it's like, yo, you don't, you don't get to play? You still go to all the rehearsals and stuff like that. And so, you know, uh, I was just fortunate to have some really good friends, you know. Um, I met Maurice. I met Maurice when he was in high school playing with, um, he was playing with his gospel choir at his high school. Mm -hmm. And then a few years later, like probably the next year or two years later, I saw him playing at Gospel Fest with John P. Key, and I would see him every year. And then just one year, um, John Key came up on stage and was like, you know, they were getting ready to do Rain On Us, and he was saying how Liddell was uh, about to quit. And he was saying Liddell was moving home, and he was introducing Rain On Us, and he was saying Liddell was moving home. And I went up to Maurice, I found Maurice after the concert, and all in down, like downtown Chicago, where they had used to have a Gospel Fest in Millennium Park. I, I, Followed, I tracked Maurice down some kind of way, and I was like, yo, man, like, I heard John say he needs a new drummer, or that Liddell's leaving. I'm like, man, please, give me a shot. And he was looking at me like I was crazy. He was like, who the heck is this? And so I was like, man, come on, man. I'm like, you know, just give me a shot. And um, I went and talked to Teddy, because Teddy had actually been filling in so on some dates with John. And so I was just like, Teddy, can you hook me up with Maurice? And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, that'll probably work. And, um, wow. But Maurice, he was, man, Maurice was playing me, actually, y'all. Maurice was like, he wasn't vibing with me. I'm like, Maurice, he didn't want to talk. He, wouldn't, he was ignoring me. He wouldn't take my calls. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was straight playing me. He hired, like, five other drummers from Chicago. And he had, he had a bunch of people. We had Quinn and Teddy yeah, right. and Doobie Powell. All the people went out with, 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 with John. It just so happened that none of them were able to, like, commit long term. Uh -huh. And then one week... I was in the studio. I had I was playing with Ramsey Lewis when I graduated school, and then Ramsey was like, "Man, I'm doing another album for this group called Urban Nights, but I'm getting ready to change it out, and I'll feature all the young guys from Chicago." And so we were starting working on that record, and we was getting ready. We was tracking one song with this dude named Kevin Randolph, who like he's from Chicago. He lived in L.A. And so I think sure Ray Reed was supposed to play bass initially for the session, and then he had to pull out at the last minute, and Kevin Randolph called Maurice. And then, like, we did that one session. Me and Maurice was, like, clipped, like, yeah. and it just became, like, it was from that first time we played together, we was just like, man. Right. And then he was like, oh, man, I shouldn't have been dogging you out, and I shouldn't have been dissing you. <laughs> like, man, I shouldn't have been dissing you. Yo, man, you could play, man, you know? And so then, um, but then he, like, he, like, probably, like, four weeks later, he called my phone from an airplane, and he left me a message on my house. I had, a, I, I had my own phone in my parents' house. So I had like my own phone line because my dad used to be complaining like, yo, don't have these girls calling the house all late. So I had my whole, I had my own phone. So I got home from church one Sunday. Maurice called me from the airplane. It was like, yo, I'm on the airplane. I'm leaving Charlotte. Yo, John, John said uh, to get a new drummer. He's like, man, so you're going go to go to Charlotte this week and then we're going to go to Atlanta. So Maurice took me to his home church and it was just me and him who went to his home church and we just went over some music. Wow. And then I got on the plane, went to Charlotte, and that was it, you know. Right. And, uh, you know, Maurice just, you know, so, I, you know. So you didn't just get on YouTube, look at some drummers no, play and say, no, I don't get No, we didn't, we didn't have that. <laughs> right. I, you know, I, I, had to, I had to play along with records. Right. I snuck in clubs, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I sat, in, sat in, in the back of sound checks and stuff like that, you know. Um, carrying dudes gear just so I could see if I, you know what I'm saying, just so I could get a chance to sit behind them. I would go and carry Kevin Bronson or Clyde Davis or Ray. I would carry this stuff around. Yeah, drummer on, on the bear? Yep. Just, you know what I'm saying, just sit behind them, you know what I'm saying, and hopefully they would, you know what I'm saying, take a break. I would be waiting for them to, like, take a break to go get something to eat and the rehearsal start back up and not be able to play for, like, right. 30 minutes with the band. That's really how right. you know, I learned about playing with older guys because I would be filling in in those rehearsals for however long. Wow. And I would just sit there and listen to all the music and stuff, and I would know it. So, right. so thank I, you, know, man. Lawrence got a pretty cool story too. You know, he got kicked off a record. <laughs> he really, really did. By yeah, this dude right here. And then he did. He he went back the next day though. Yeah, wow. he so did. He went back the next day. I was with them. <laughs> They kicked me off of a session. No, I, <laughs> they kicked me. We Actually, did not. He, it was between them two that Darius had them give me the word. Yeah, we're gonna call Joy in, but they ain't say it like that. You know, they they honestly said it in a very respectful way. Like you know, you you almost ready. You're just missing certain things. You right. know, but I, I I wasn't no fool. I could feel it myself. But the hunger was more than what I didn't have. So right. you know, I called Joy back like, hey, you know, you going to that studio tomorrow? <laughs> 
<laughs> can you come get me? Can I ride with you? Yeah. The session fine. that he got, he got booted off of. He but came see, back to the next day. Enjoy. I could play you something today that I learned that day. I still remember. Wow. Yeah. That's, That's crazy. great, man. Thank y'all, man. I appreciate it, man. People need to hear this stuff. If it's not the C-Dub brand, well, it's not the C-Dub brand.